Now that we have defined the mathematical operators, uh, big O, big Omega, and big Theta, let's look at some of their mathematical properties. The first property is uh, transitivity. If you have a running time function f, which is big O of g, which means that uh, g is asymptotically an upper bound for f, and g is big O of h, then f is also big O of h. Why is this true? It's actually very simple and it's based on um, the definition. So given that f is big O of g, that means that f of n is uh, more or equal than some constant c, positive constant, times g of n for n greater or equal than n zero. And because g is also big O of h, that means that g of n is again upper bounded by some potentially different constant c prime, again positive, times h of n. For all n greater or equal than some potentially different n zero prime, we will combine these two inequalities. For any n that is greater or equal than the max, of um, n0 and n0 prime, we have that f of n will be lower or equal than c times c prime, this is now a new constant, times h of n. You see that? Which means that f of n is big O of h of n, which is what we wanted to show. Showing the two other properties here uh, for big omega and for big theta. It's basically exactly the same logic. Now, why is transitivity useful? Imagine that you have an algorithm for which you know that the running time g is uh, big O of something. For example, merge short for which you know that the running time is big O and log n. Now, if you have another algorithm for which you can argue that the running time is totally upper bounded by merge sort, then based on this property, you can also immediately say that the running time of this algorithm, the new algorithm, is also um, big O of n log n. Another simple property is additivity. Imagine that you have an algorithm that has two parts. The first part has a running time which is big O of h. h is some function, for example, n log n. The second part of your algorithm um, has a running time g, which is also big O of n log n. Then your combined algorithm, f plus g, will also be big O of h. Right? So if f is big O of h and g is big O of h, then f plus g is also big O of h. The proof again is very simple. Given that f is big O of h, we know that f of n upper bounded by c times h of n, and we also know that g of n is some different constant c prime h of n. This may be true for any n greater than n0, this may be true for any n greater than n0 prime. Again, as long as n is greater than the max of these two, we will have that f of n plus g of n will of course be lower or equal than c plus c prime times h of n which shows that f plus g is big O of h. So uh, the two other properties for big omega and big theta are very similar again based on the definition. Another very simple property is that big O and big omega are in some sense opposite. If a running time f is big O of g, meaning that g is an asymptotic upper bound of f, then g is big omega of f, meaning that f is asymptotically a lower bound for g. Why is this true? From the big O definition, we know that what this means is that g of n is 
greater or equal than 1 over c times f of n, again for n greater or equal than n0, which proves that g is big omega of f. Let's look at one more property. Uh, this time, imagine that we have an algorithm with uh, two parts. One part has running time g, the other has running time f. And we know that g is big O of f, so g is upper bounded by f asymptotically. Then, our algorithm, if we combine the f part and the g part, will have a running time of f plus g, and that is big theta of f. It has an asymptotic tight bound of f. For example, imagine that g of n is something uh, linear, while f of n is something quadratic. The quadratic, of course, term is slower, it dominates the running time. So the combined algorithm with running time f plus n will have the same asymptotic running time with the quadratic component, which is f. The proof of this is um, very simple. We know that f of n plus g of n is greater or equal than f of n because remember these are running times and they are non-negative, right? So this is true for any n. This means that f plus g is big omega of f from the definition of big omega. Additionally, we know that g is big O of f, this is given, and we know that f is big O of f. This is true from the definition of big O for any function f. From the additivity of the big O operation, if we add f and g, we will get that this is big O of f. So we have that f plus g is big omega of f, and f plus g is big O of f, combining this with this, f plus g is big theta of f. 